Long talks to the times. So I'll speak a little bit about this and uh, read the purport also. Umagyantim erandas yakina jana salakaya chaksu malikam yena tasmai shri guru vena maha. Namam Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavali Pacharine. Here we see Shasun Yavadi Pastyatyara Sutaine. Vanchakalpaturu Vistya, Kripa Sindhu Vaibhacha. Nitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha. Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare. Seventh Canto, first chapter, verse number eight. Jala Kela Susadvasya Devarshim Rajaso Saran Tamaso Yaksha Raksam Si Tat Kalanu Guna Bajet. Translation When the quality of goodness is prominent, the sages and demigods flourish with the help of that quality with which they are infused and surcharged by the Supreme Lord. Similarly, when the mode of passion is prominent, the demons flourish. When, the, when ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and rakshasas flourish. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is present in everyone's heart, fostering the reactions of Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagun. To the Prabhupada's purport. The Supreme Personality of God is not partial to anyone. This is an important part to understand. One over anyone else. But he reciprocates according to how people act and how people uh, uh, approach him. The conditioned soul is under the influence of the various modes of material nature. Behind the na material nature is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is also an interesting to understand. In one place it says there's nothing outside of the three modes of material nature, nothing material. So these three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, are the controlling forces within this material world. They're energies. They're the energies of the Lord, but they're indirectly acting under his supervision. Indirectly, it's more like the Lord creates the material energy through his different agencies. And then he empowers the material energy according to a certain quality. So when people are infused with a certain type of quality, they connect with that particular energy, either goodness, passion, ignorance, or sometimes a combination of two of the modes. And sometimes in unusual cases, which hardly ever happens, combination of the three, uh, all three modes. But usually two modes are usually prominent, either goodness and passion, passion and ignorance, or um, yeah, usually those combinations. Passion sometimes is found a little bit within the mode of goodness, and, and passion is also found within the mode of ignorance also. So these modes are, another name for mode is guna, as you see here. And guna means rope in Sanskrit. So guna means mode. Mode means particular operating function. And uh, guna also means rope. So we know what a rope does. A rope has a tendency to use to bind things or tie things up. So the living entity, according to their desire, 
which manifests in a type of activity, they get captured by a particular mode of nature. And that mode pushes them according to the nature of that desire. In other words, if people want to become happy and they're living in the mode of ignorance, it doesn't work. Even if they want to become materially happy, because the mode of ignorance is a destructive mode. The mode of ignorance is characterized by laziness, sleep, excessive sleep, laziness, intoxication, madness, uh, frustration, idleness. Um, there's many types of, the mode of ignorance is just, it, do, it doesn't benefit anybody nor the person that is connected with that particular mode based on their desire. It's the lowest of all modes and it is considered to be detrimental to everyone, both participant and those who ha are infected by the modes and they act, they never help anyone on any level. Then you have the mode of passion. The mode of passion is characterized by longing, strong desire to achieve material success, um, a desire for uh, wealth, position, fame, um, nice uh, arrangements, and a characteristic of working hard towards a particular goal, material goal. In the mode of ignorance, people don't work hard, they're just lazy. Mm -hmm. But in the mode of passion, there is a strong energy that pushes people to achieve their desired goals. And that's called the mode of passion. The only good quality about the mode of passion is that it has a creative factor to it. And just like we know, the uh, in order to create something, you have to be infused a little bit with the mode of passion. So creativity is one of the elements or one of the ingredients of the mode of passion. Uh, and so people, mm, that is considered to be one of the more desirable characteristics <clears throat> from the perspective of things that are beneficial. But generally the mode of passion is very destructive. <coughs> As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, um, in the uh, third chapter, Raja Vidya, no, Raja Gunya, no, Raja, what is that? Raja, let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, the verse is, um, let me think. Uh, the verse is the third third chapter, verse number thirty-five. No, not no, not three thirty-five. I'm sorry. Uh, three. Let's see. Hmm. Can't remember the verse. Rajagunya. Raja Gunya. Let's see. Mahapapam Mahapshavna Vidheya Vihavarinam that mm. oh, uh, Guru Maharaj, it's 337 Guru Maharaj. Uh, 337, yeah, okay. Um, Sri Bhagavan. Yeah, bring, bring it up because it really indicates the mode of passion. Mm -hmm. 337, yeah. I thought it was 336, but it's 337.
Kama Asia Krota Asia Rajaguna Samud Bhava Mahashano Mahapapa Vihe Viha Vahinam. The Lord is speaking, it's lust only, Arjuna, which comes in contact with the material mode of passion and later transformed into wrath, which is the all devouring sinful enemy of the world. And so this lust, what is lust anyway? Lust is our natural propensity to love Krishna. But when it comes in contact with the material energy, it turns into lust. It's, it's actually pure love. The desire to enjoy loving relationships with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's called the Adiras, the original mood of the, the living entity's na nature towards the Supreme Lord. But when it comes in contact with the material energy, it changes its, uh, the energy is still the same. It's almost like you can use the analogy, uh, electricity is, if you put it through one type of unit, it can produce heat. If you produce, put it through another type of unit, it produces cold. But electricity is the same. It's the, it's the unit that determines how that electricity produces something either hot or cold. So in the same way, um, our natural love for Krishna, the Adiras, which was pure bhakti, when it comes in contact with the material energy, then it turns into lust. And here, it turns into something very detrimental. And when it, it, it turns into anger because lust cannot be satisfied. Lust is like a blazing fire. The more fuel you put onto the, the fire, the more the fire will burn, burn. The more you try to satisfy lust, the stronger it becomes and it be, ne never becomes satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people think, well, if I satisfy my lust, then I feel good. But it's like throwing a log onto, the, uh, onto a flyer. When you throw a log onto the fire, the log doesn't catch fire right away. It doesn't burn immediately. You give it some time, and then the fire will blaze even greater. So in the same way, when people try to satisfy their lusty desires, what happens is, is there appears to be some satisfaction there, but it just is a form of um, uh, intoxication, making one think that they're happy. But in a few moments, maybe even less, again, that same energy starts to push and it becomes even greater. Okay. So this uh, Rajagunya is, is controlled by the demons. In other words, the demons, as that verse, go back to the verse that we were, originally started yeah it says here when the when the go down to the verse itself it says when the mode of passion is prominent the demons flourish so what we have today is that the mode of passion and a lot of the mode of ignorance is is more stronger in the world than the mode of goodness there are very few people who are living in the mode of goodness, but it has some existence. But generally the modes of passion and ignorance is what conducts the material energy in the present material situation we live in. This is of course characteristic of the age of Kali. And so the demons are flourishing right now on the planet. And therefore, the demons are, because the mode of passion is so strong, the demons are appear to be in control. Uh, in other words, they're directing how human society is going. And uh, because they're demons and because they're by nature uh, destructive towards anything that is of the nature of the mode of goodness or anything that is the of the nature of the mode of transcendence, 
you'll find that people find happiness or look for happiness within these modes. And therefore the whole, the whole idea of consumerism is really um, the mode of passion exasperated, turned on high throttle where it's all about money. Make money, spend money. Get more and more material things and for more and more material control. And then you become what we say successful. So this is the demons. Well, the demons right now, as Chris, as it says here, the Lord fosters the reactions of Sattva Guna, Raja Guna, and Tamaguna. So this is interesting. So what does that mean? So when the when the mode of goodness is prominent, the demigods flourish and the devotees are more in control and the element of the world, people are more pious, religious, and exhibit the qualities that come under these categories, such as charitableness, friendship, kindness, concern for the welfare of others, intelligence, uh, knowledge. But when the demons are prominent, which we have today, it's all about, you know, getting material uh, success. And when it gets pushed to a limit or when it gets moved forward, then it becomes destructive. Then there is no, uh, what we say, consideration of the individual. The goal is economic development sense gratification. The individual falls below that. The needs of the individual are not so important. What's important is that we enjoy our senses. And it doesn't matter how you enjoy your senses, as long as you can enjoy your senses, that's the mode of passion when it's pushed to its extreme. And that means if you even if you if you find happiness in killing people, then that is uh, that is your happiness. So there are people who actually live like that. They love to control and kill other people. And they find that that gives them a great satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And if they have power, influence, and control of the activities of society, and that means the political areas, the social areas, the media, the entertainment industries, the, uh, the news industries, then they propagate this principle as the way to live. And this is considered to be truth, which is not. It's all ignorance, it's all illusion, it's all Maya, and it's all destructive. <laughs> so this is the situation we're in now. The demons are in more prominent in the world. And therefore, we don't take what they say as being correct because it's all about control. It's all about exploitation. But they make it sound like it's for your benefit. Mm -hmm. They make it sound like it's for your benefit. And that's because they think that, hey, uh, you know, if the more we can get people's money, the more we can get power, the more we can get influence, the more we can get control, the more the better off the world will be. So the demons have this a little bit of this altruism in it, but it's based on a wrong premise that you know, the individual is the material body. And because that is the whole principle of the mode of passion, you are, you're the material body, you are the your mind, and to satisfy the mind and body as much as possible, either directly, indirectly, whatever way it comes, then, and they create newer and newer ways for people to become what we say attracted to various types of sense gratification. That's the mode of passion. 
Uh, okay, go down to the purport again. So, and then it says here, you know, then, and, uh, and the Supreme Lord, he's not partial. But he says here, but one's victory and loss under the influence of Sattva Guna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna are reactions of these modes, not of the Supreme Lord's partiality. So it appears that the Lord is partial to the demons. It appears that the Lord is partial to the Yakshas and Rakshas, Saksas. But the Lord is neutral when it comes to the activities of the material. And so where did the devotees fit in? We'll go down and we'll read a little bit more. According to the statements of the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Sandarbha, the Supreme Lord being always transcendental to material quality is never affected or influenced by these qualities. This same characteristic is also present in the living being. Because we are by nature spiritual, we have nothing to do with anything material, but because material energy, because we play with the material energy, we are controlled by that energy. As soon as you try to enjoy the material energy, you become controlled by that same energy according to the particular type of mode. So, but because one is conditioned by the material na nature, even the pleasure potency of the Lord is manifested in the con conditioned soul as troublesome. Interesting. So that pleasure potency is the nature of the living entity's love for Krishna, but directed towards material energy comes troublesome. In the material world, the pleasure enjoyed by the conditioned soul is followed by many painful conditions. And then Prabhupada gives the example. We, we see two great wars conducted by Rajagun and Tamagun, where both parties were actually ruined. Sometimes big, they say, well, this party won the war. But Prabhupada says the German people declared war against the English to ruin them, but the result was that both parties were ruined. Although the allies were apparently, here we go, victorious, at least on paper, actually neither of them were victorious. Therefore, it should be concluded that the Supreme Personality of God is not partial to anyone. This is the main point of this. He allows the modes to act according to the, the living entity's connection with the modes. And whatever mode becomes prominent, that goes on in the world. And the Lord remains neutral. Everyone works under the influence of the various modes of nature. But when the, the various modes are prominent, the demigods or demons appear victorious under the influence of these modes. Uh -huh. So... Everyone enjoys the fruits of the quality of activities. And then there's some verses from the Bhagavad Gita. The manifestation of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the bodies are illumined by knowledge. O chief of the Bharta, when there is an increase in the mode of passion, the symptoms of great attachment, uncontrolled desiring, hankering, and intense endeavor and develop. When there's an increase in the mode of ignorance, madness, illusion, inertia, and darkness are manifest. This is an interesting verse. If we could study this verse, you'll understand exactly how everything is going on in the world today with this coronavirus and all the propaganda coming out around it. You can see how this verse really connects with the understanding of how things are actually working. The Supreme Personality of God who is present in everyone's heart simply gives the results of the, of the increase in the various qualities. You know, so in other words, the demons act, he gives them the results through the mode of passion. The Yakshas and the Rakshas act, he gives them the results in the modes of ignorance. He supervises victory and loss, but he does not take part in them. <laughs> So where does the devotees fit in? <laughs> we'll get to that. The various modes of material nature do not work all at once. The interaction of these modes are exactly like seasonal changes. Sometimes there's an increment of the Mirajaguna, sometimes Tamaguna, and sometimes Sattvaguna. Generally, the demigods are in charge with Sattvaguna, the demons and 
and demigods fight, the demigods are victorious because of the prominence of their sattva guna qualities. However, this is not the partiality of the Supreme Lord. This is a very, very instructive verse and purport. You don't need to study politics, sociology to understand what's going on in the world. This verse will let you understand how everything is clear. As long as you know how the modes are acting and what is the position of the, the Supreme Lord in relationship to the modes of material issue, you can understand everything clearly. So where do devotees fit in? Are the devotees affected by passion, ignorance, goodness? It says that devotees are in sattva good or transcendental to the material energy. In other words, they act above the material energy, although they exhibit the quality of goodness, they are not within the mode of goodness because the mode of goodness still has elements of attachment. Now I'm talking from the position of pure understanding. Although um, we find that devotees still sometimes act in the mode of ignorance, not very often. Oftentimes work in the mode of passion. In other words, devotees are affected by the mode of passion. What does that mean? When they do something, whatever it is, they look for some material gain from that. <laughs> or they plug into something that brings material gain towards the activities of devotional service. And uh, the mode of goodness, is these are the characteristics that Krishna recommends. He says that even to Arjuna, be situated in goodness. And then from goodness, and then you engage those qualities in the in devotional service. And then you move to sattva gun or pure goodness or transcendental. Like that. So where do the devotees fit in? That although the modes of ignorance and passion are so strong, do they affect the devotees? Only if we act in connection to these modes. These modes might cause the devotees to become disturbed because they're all around, you know, wherever you live, you're in an environment where the passion and ignorance is there if you're living somewhere in the world. So there is the influence of the atmosphere around, just like you may be a doctor and uh, you have to work into a hospital and in the hospital there's so many patients and there's so many kinds of diseases in the hospital. But because you're a doctor, you're not diseased, but you're in that atmosphere where there, there is disease, so you have to take precaution. Otherwise, you'll also get sick. <laughs> so we have to take precautions in being influ being uh, of what we say, surrounded by the material modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And if we have these tendencies and we're still acting on the tendencies within the modes, and particularly I'm talking about Rajagunya and Tamagun, then we will get a reaction, but not in the full force of that reaction, because one is engaged in devotional service, but one has to make sure they always act in the mode of goodness and everything they do in terms of the execution of devotional service like that. Uh, so sometimes devotees play with the, the lower modes and so they get trapped by that and then they have to get a reaction for that. But the reaction is not full like the non-devotees who get the full reaction of the modes. The devotees get a token reaction of that mode. Just like we're in the midst of this coronavirus. So we have to take precautions. <laughs> why, what is the, why does the coronavirus come? <laughs> Um, uh, change to uh, change to uh, seventh canto, fifteenth chapter, verse number twenty-four. Why do these these uh, pestilence? Why do wars and pestilence come? Uh, yeah. 
7.15.24. Go to the 24th verse. Too. And this explains what's happening right now. So we'll go right, we'll go, we'll just quickly read the translation. By good behavior and freedom from envy, one should counteract suffering due to other living entities. So if you behave good and you're free from envy, you are not, you're not generally not affected by the effects of other living entities. By meditation and trance, you can, con you can counteract the sufferings due to providence. That means, uh, you know, if you, our meditation and trance is what? It's chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. By practicing Hatha Yoga, Pranayam, and so forth, one can counteract sufferings due to body and mind. So one who's good at Hatha Yoga and Pranayama can pretty much stay free from all diseases. Simply by developing the mode of goodness, especially in regard to eating, one should conquer sleep. So eating and sleeping are connected. And when we, uh, when we uh, regulate our eating, we can control our sleeping. Okay, now, the purport is the point I wanted to make here. Here, it says, people do not know that because of killing innocent animals, they themselves will have to suffer severe reactions from material nature. Any country where people indulge in unnecessary killing of animals will have to suffer from wars and pestilence imposed by material nature. So that's the point. Any country that engages in unnecessary killing of animals, and they, they've included an unnecessary killing of young children, unborn, unborn babies, to add to that, so wars will happen, pestilences will happen. These are reactions for the sinful activities that are going on in society like that. Hurry, that's just a good chat first. Okay, so then, therefore, this coronavirus is not for the devotees <clears throat> because the devotees are not involved with animal killing. That means they don't eat meat. Anyone who eats any kind of foodstuffs that falls into the category of meat eating, they're contributing to the killing of animals directly, not indirectly, but it directly. So, but the devotees are not involved in these things. So therefore we are being victimized by this mode of material suffering coming from the modes of ignorance and passion due to the effects of Kali Yuga and due to the sinful activities of people in general. So that's, therefore, if we, just like I use that analogy, if the doctor takes precautions when he goes into the hospital, he doesn't get sick. So although we're involved with, you know, being in the atmosphere where there is sinful activity everywhere around, we won't be affected if we stay, stay strong in our Krishna consciousness. And that means taking shelter of Krishna, specifically, in Ch and Prabhupada says here at the very end, one cannot avoid the sufferings inflicted by providence. Interesting. This is what's happening now. And therefore, when suffering comes, one should fully absorb oneself in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So here's the, here's the answer. You know, providence is coming. We could get... We could get sick from the virus. We could get sick from the vaccine, whatever ways we can get sick from. <laughs> or you know, we can be victimized by demons and so many other things. But we're protected by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Like that. And then the last line, avoid suffering from body and mind by practicing mystic hatha yoga. So that's also true. If you are expert at representing, of course, we don't practice mystic Hatha Yoga because the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and Bhakti Yoga includes mystic Hatha Yoga automatically within the process. Because Bhakti is the highest and includes all of the other forms of yoga within it. Provided we execute it according to how it is meant to be executed. If we are still mixing elements of the modes of passion and ignorance 
into our life, we can expect, we won't be able to get, expect to get complete protection from the influence of province and due to the disturbances caused by other living entities. So you'll see, and then hit back to the position, you'll see the Supreme Personality of God it is very inclined to protect his devotees. But the devotees have to seek that protection. The Lord gives the protection even when we don't seek it. But if we get too far away from not seeking it, then we might find ourselves being victimized just like the rest of the society is also being victimized by wars, by pestilence, by so many of the evils that go on in today's world. Just like the Christian, we know Krishna appeared 5,100 years ago and he came in his personal form. How did he come? The demons were prominent all over the world. And Mother Earth was suffering tremendously from that. And she was, you know, she went. She's personified Earth, Mother Bhumi. She went to Lord Brahma and pleaded for help. Lord Brahma came with some of the principal demigods to the ocean of milk. And they stood on the ocean of milk, a distance away from the Lord and prayed. And these are called the Purusha Shukta prayers they offered to the Lord. The Lord knew what the situation on earth was, but he didn't do anything until actually the demigods came and played that we cannot solve the situation. We cannot solve it. Only you can bring back, you know, a normal lifestyle to the earth. In other words, you can bring back the mode of goodness. The Lord, you know, considered and through the mind of the Lord, he entered into the mind and heart of Lord Brahma and he and he indicated soon that he will appear in the world. So how is the Lord appearing in the world now? Prabhupada talks about this in relationship to this pastime. He says, we don't have to worry. The Lord has already appeared. He's here in the form of a Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Kali Kale, Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite Hoya Sarva Jigat Nistara. Kali Kale, in this age of Kali, Nam Rup. The name, the form of the name is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So Krishna's name and Krishna are exactly the same. There is no difference even in the principle of explanation. All of the qualities, Nija Sarva Shakti, Lord Chaitanya says in the second verse of, of uh, Chikshastika, all of the qualities, all of the forms, all of the pastimes, all of the, the names are found in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This Hare Krishna Mahamantra is so complete. It's the absolute principle of the Supreme Lord who appears at this particular time in order to bring back the world to uh, the devotion to Krishna consciousness like that. So one who takes shelter of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, not just when we want to or when we feel like it or when we have to, but one who chants regularly 24 hours a day is always connected and free from the influence of the material energy. And Prabhupada made that point. He says, the demons will increase. Don't worry. Krishna is there to protect. So Krishna allows the modes to ascend according to which mode is prominent. And therefore, he doesn't interfere with that. But he does give protection to his devotees so they are not affected by what happens. And that protection is his, his personal appearance in his the name of the Lord, like that. So it's interesting. We can see if we study these verses that we just, especially 718 and 71524, you can see how everything is working in a certain way. Sometimes people say, well, why doesn't the Lord do something? He is. 
He's come in the form of the name. He's come in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He's come in the form of the pure devotees. He's come in the form of his deity form. He's come in the form of his prashadam. He's come in different ways. He's come in the form of the intelligence that is needed to free oneself from the suffering, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. If Srimad Bhagavatam has all the answers to all the problems of the world and teaches the principles of how to raise our consciousness to pure spiritual. And of course, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's not that as soon as we chant Hare Krishna, uh, we're on the transcendental platform. We have to practice. But as when you, as soon as you chant Hare Krishna, there's one thing that is immediate, and that is protection. One is protected from the influence of the material energy. To get to the transcendental platform, that takes purification of heart, and that comes gradually through through Lord Chaitanya's teachings by. Uh, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, serving the Vaishnavas, and spreading the glories of uh, the, the chanting of the holy name to as many people and many areas as possible. Okay, so I'll uh, conclude there and see if there's any comments or questions. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for such a wonderful class today. Um, about modes of material nature, effect of them. Um, so, Guru Maharaj, I just want to clarify with you. Um, like you said, um, the modes of material, so in the purport, it's written that uh, Lord is not partial to anyone, um, but, um, uh, but Lord is partial to devotees. Is that right, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, yeah, he says that in that same verse, in Samoham Samabhute Shunam Priya. And then the last two verses, he said, but one who engages in, one who is in, is a, engages in devotional service is a friend and I am a friend in him. Yeah. So the, the partiality is according to how you approach. Yeah. The demons the akshas, those in the lower modes, or even those in the mode of goodness, are looking towards the material energy for some happiness. The devotees are not. They're looking simply towards Krishna. The devotees are focused exclusively on Krishna. They're not ex focused, on, focused on anything else. Therefore, it appears, and again, I use the word appears, he's partial but he's not partial. He's partial because he, he, those who approach him, just like, it's a simple example. Um, a, a person may be a, uh, you know, a wonderful person in the world. He may have a big position. He may have to deal with so many different types of people, but he gives special affection and attention to his, his own personal family. He may deal with, he might be a teacher, and teach so many children, but he has a special affection for his own children. Why? Because they depend directly on him or they're connected with him. So devotees get connected with Krishna through devotional service. There's no other way to connect with Krishna. You can't connect with Krishna through the modes of material energy. The, the non-devotees are trying to take what Krishna gives rather than they're not so much interested in Krishna, they want what he can give. And that, that falls within this category of the three modes of material nature. So it appears he's partial, but he's not. <laughs> um, yes, good much. So, um, but you also said that uh, Krishna is protecting, uh, protecting the devotees. So is he not protecting the other people too? Uh, like non-devotees all the according, whole world. Yeah, according to how much they, they seek his protection. Mm -hmm. okay. Their material karma cannot protect him, although they may be, may, be, may be acting in a certain way where they're getting the results of their good karma. And it looks like they're protected by that, but that's, that's temporary. That will pass in due course of time. 
but the devotees are, he protects the non-devotees too, to the degree that they, uh, that they take his shelter. Mm -hmm. The devotees take complete shelter. They're always dependent on the Lord, 24 seven. The non-devotees once in a while, when things get rough, then they go to the Lord for protection. <laughs> then they seek out some some protection when a situation comes and they realize there's no other place to go mm -hmm. there was one situation in the world where it was a it was in chicago it happened many 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 years ago back in the 1950s i think it was when it was a tremendous cold spell in chicago so cold that uh, everything practically stopped and they had a, they had a, people had to move out of their homes because they they couldn't get sufficient heat they were putting them into big gymnasiums and keeping people in large in other words and the cold spell continued to go on week after week after week and that's the governor and all the political people in control, all of all of his uh, people who work under him, they were trying so many things to, to arrange for getting people protected from the cold. But still, it wasn't working completely. And then finally, the governor got on the news and said, we have tried everything, but now there's only one thing left to do. We're asking everyone to pray to God. <laughs> That's practically a, an exact statement. They only went to God when they realized there was nothing else left. <laughs> but devotees are not like that. Devotees are always connect, connected with Krishna. Whatever we do, Krishna says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer, whatever you give away, whatever, whatever you do, do it for me. So then a devotee is connected to Krishna through everything. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, does, that make, does, that, does that answer your question? Yes, yes Guru Maharaj. Definitely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's protecting everyone, but according to how they, how they approach him. As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path. You know. But people want protection from the material energy. In other words, we make armies so we can protect the country. We make, um, you know, we make... Uh, uh, we get safes so we can protect our personal belongings and lock them in the safe. So everyone is depending on some kind of material arrangement for protection. But Prabhupada says in that one purport, he said, it appears that the, the English were victory, but that was only on paper. On, only on paper. Both sides took, uh, were, uh, both sides suffered. He said that even though it looked like the English won on paper, but everybody lost. Because they depend on material nature or the control of the material nature in order to facilitate their uh, activities. But devotees are not like that. We depend on Krishna. <laughs> And how much you depend on Krishna depends on how much you'll be able to perceive his protection at every second. Is, good. is, that, is that clear now, Lavanya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. We have to understand the position of the Lord. When you start to understand his position, then you can understand how things are working. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We got a question from Roberto. Yes, yes, good. Um, Roberto Prabhu is asking the question, what does it mean to conquer sleep and how does one do that in everyday life? 
Uh, well, it says by reducing eating, you can also you conquer sleep. Eating is connected, sleep is connected to eating. If we eat too much or eat too little, it'll affect how our sleep patterns. So one who eats just enough and then gradually, as time goes on, tries to reduce their eating more and more, then sleeping is also reduced. Conquering sleep means not to be conquered by sleep. <laughs> Is that okay, Robert Griffin? Robert Griffin. If you uh, you see in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says one who one who eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much or doesn't sleep enough, cannot practice the yoga system. And then in one verse he says. Yukta hara viharasya, yukta vapna vibodasya, yoga bhavati dukaha. Um, he says that um, by being temperate in eating, sleeping, working, and recreation, the word temperate means moderate, one can perform the yoga system. And the ability to assimilate knowledge is affected by our bodily activities. If we eat too much, eat, sleep too little, sleep too much, sleep too little, we will not be able to keep fixed attention on our devotional practice. We will be distracted or we'll maybe be sleepy or affected by the mind's wanderings like that. Okay, so what was the rest of that question? There was something else that came uh, up. No, Guru Maharaj, we have a lot of questions today. Um, it's from, uh, um, I think Raj Prabhu has raised his hand uh, previously. Um, Raj Prabhu, you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Or? There was uh, something about what's the difference between yakshas and raksha yakshas? Or yeah, 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 that one is about Raj. Um, Can you read that question out? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please explain what demons, yakshas, and rakshasas are and the difference between them. <laughs> well, just like there's certain, there's so many different types of demigods, there's so many different types of humans, there's so many different types of demons. <laughs> rakshas, yakshas, jinns, pishasas. Uh, uh, there's a whole list of different types of demons and, and uh, lower creatures. They have different types of bodies. They have different types of mentalities, all affected in a demoniac way. So there's variety of demigods. There's three different categories of demigods. And then within those three categories of different demigods, uh, and the demons, there are different categories of demons, the yakshas, the rakshashas, the jinns, the vishashas, the kusmandas. In some of the verses in Bhagavatam, you'll find a whole list of the different types of demons there are. And sometimes the list is about 15 or 20 different categories of demons. Just like the jinns, what are the jinns? Jinns are, they have a fiery body and they subsist on air only. And they live within the earth. And they come out sometimes to harass people. Sometimes they come in dreams, sometimes they come to cause trouble. So there's, yeah, demons are always causing trouble. And that's their business. To give trouble to others. <laughs> yes, good Maharaj. Uh, there is one more question um, by Mohanasni Radha Mataji. Uh, she is asking Hare Krishna Gurudev, are we allowed to donate blood plasma, uh, plasma, and in which bit 
and in which mode is that? Are we allowed to donate blood plasma? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Well, if you donate something to somebody else, they'll benefit because your your blood has got a lot of elements of prashadam in it. <laughs> but you should not take the blood coming from other people who are non-devotees because you'll get, you know, you'll get their karma also. You'll get some effects of their karma. But you... But it's not recommended devotees do that. If you want to help people, there's so many ways you can help people. <laughs> if there's an emergency and then there's some need, I would say you may find that. Somebody asked me that question just recently, not too long ago, maybe about a three or four months ago. And what is the, re the, the effects of such things? I can't remember what the what the answer was, but if you receive blood, you're gonna you may find yourself in trouble. If you give blood, it's not so bad. Raj Prabhu is asking. Um, the purport mentioned a reference to the Bhagavata Sandarbha. Please, can you explain what this is? Bhagavad Sandarbha is a work by Jiva Goswami, uh, where that verse is mentioned in the Bhagavad Sandarbha. Um, in that verse, he's talking, uh, in that Bhagavad Sandarbha, he's talking about the position of the Supreme Personality of God in relationship to, uh, to other things. So there is there is a Tattva Sandarbha, then the Bhagavad Sandarbha, and there's the, uh, uh, let me see, what's the next one? Paramatma Sandarbha, and then there's the, uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, Preeti Sandarbha, like that, Krishna, and then there's the, Krishna Sandarbha also. These are works by Jiva Goswami describing the absolute truth in different categories. Mm -hmm. Bhagavad Sandarbha talks a lot about the form of the Lord. And in that Bhagavad Sandarbha, um, uh, Jiva Goswami mentions this verse 718 in there. And so Prabhupada includes it in this particular purport. That's all, as a reference. You have to change the water too. Take both the Prabhupada's water too. Uh, where are you gonna put it? Uh, put, it put it in here. And then in the metal container, there's more water. Okay, excuse me for a second. So yeah, the Sindarbas are works by Jiva Goswami, and they're really very highly philosophical, but they're recommended readings. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Gurmaraj, there is one more question by Namrata Mataji on the chat. Um, Dandavat Pranam Guru Maharaj, how, how can someone realize if they are affected by modes of nature in a subtle way? By, um, by, what's, by what is your thought process? You can think in the mode of passion, you can think in the mode of goodness, you can think of the, in the mode of ignorance. So your, your, your consciousness is the subtle effects of the modes. The gross effects are the activities you perform based on that consciousness. So sometimes you walk into a place that's sinful 
and your your consciousness becomes affected by that atmosphere so that means whatever whether it's modes of passion or ignorance your consciousness will be affected you walk into a temple your consciousness will be affected more by the mode of goodness or by the mode of transcendence it's how it affects your consciousness that's the subtle forms of effects mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, the first who uh, raised his hand. Mm. Uh, I would do that. I have to manage somebody at the same time I'm giving class here, so I'm sorry. You have to offer that, right? You're giving him for sure. For sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, you mentioned in the last uh, purport that we read about animal killing and sinful reactions. And I've also read in Prabhupada's purports, uh, I think he's mentioning it in two to three places, uh, that according to Manu Samhita, uh, uh, anyone who is involved uh, in the killing of an animal, right from the person who is killing to the one who is transporting to the one who is selling and the one who is eating, they all get equal sinful reactions. Uh, so what happens uh, if you are working for a company whose technology is also used uh, as part of the process? For example, you're working for Ford, who's uh, a company Ford, uh, whose van is used for transporting uh, those meat. Uh, similarly, you know, I, I work for a, a, a telecoms company uh, which makes uh, communication equipments. If if they are used for killing animals uh, in the process indirectly, do we also get equal reactions? Because, I mean, Prabhupada just mentions this four, but somewhere I've also read that anyone who is involved in directly or indirectly gets the same reactions. Well, that's that, that, that's connected to meat eating, yeah. Uh, specifically, because meat eating is so is very sinful. It's completely sinful because uh, it means destroying another living entity's right to life simply to enjoy the process of eating how that works for devotees of course i always recommend that the devotees don't get involved either directly or indirectly with any kind of uh, so you'll get some trouble in your life because of that so if you distance yourself completely, just like I had one disciple, um, he was a store owner, and uh, but in the store he kept, uh, you know, alcohol and cigarettes, mostly cigarettes. So um, I told him, you know, he said, well, I can't run the store. People come in and buy so many other things just because they want cigarettes. They come in, buy cigarettes, and then they buy so many other things at the same time. So that's how my business goes on. So I said, you know, well, yeah. You, you. But then again, so many times, a couple of times he got robbed. One time he almost got killed. Um, and I've seen it too, that, you know, you're playing with that energy. And I mean, because you're a devotee and you're practicing Krishna consciousness, there is some immunity from the full reactions. And then, but Krishna is telling you at the same time, you know, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good for your spiritual life. It's not good even for your material stability. So therefore, Prabhupada wanted us to completely pull out of society's connections and create our own society within the society. Where we wouldn't have to depend on the society for, uh, for anything. And that's why we've been talking about, you know, Prabhupada's pre... Because 
you know, even if, if somebody, if somebody, uh, you know, cheats and uh, gets some money by cheating, and then they take some of that money that they, and they give it to devotees as a donation, you know, that's bad money. We'll take it on behalf of the person, and that person will get some benefit. But at the same time, uh, we may, may also get some reaction for taking money that is that is you that is that is brought about in a sinful way. So the material energy is very subtle, and the connections are there. But the Krishna has always tried to instruct his devotees to distance themselves from all of that so we can actually execute pure devotional service. Sometimes we wonder why devotees have trouble in their lives because they're connected too much with the material energy. And they expect not to be affected by it. <laughs> I mean, if you're a pure devotee, you're not affected by it. But then again, can we make that statement? <laughs> so, Maharaj, then it becomes very, very difficult and challenging to withdraw because every one of us, I mean, not every one of us, but mostly I would say, we are all engaged in some sort of occupation in the technology field. Uh, yeah. Medical yeah, field somehow. <laughs> Not only, not, not only do we, are we plugged into society, we're also plugged into the same garbage that they teach us. We actually believe what's on the news. Because we're so much connected to the society, we accept what they say. And we, we, we also accept some of the values that they, they adhere to. Yeah, that's our problem. That's a problem. But it has nothing to do with, with transcendental living that's why Prabhupada said eventually we have to come to the point of disconnecting ourselves completely from the material uh, environment in terms of being dependent on it we have to learn to be dependent on Krishna <laughs> not dependent on the material environment Chris, Prabhupada said Krishna can give you the whole world in, in one second, but he doesn't because he knows we don't know what to do with it when we get it. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, dear devotees, if you have any more questions or comments. Looks like Guru Maharaj. It looks like we lost Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. The Guru Maharaj has dropped off. We'll wait until maybe he joins again. 